Okay. Recording in progress. Do a quick roll call, Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Mr. Valencia? Yes. Brahim is part. Okay, thank you. Ms. Yeah. Pedraza? Here. Ms. Wewo? Yep, here. Mr. Langham? Yes, ma'am. Great, thank you. Mr. Stembridge, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam, thank you, Madam Chair. As we start the 1130 a.m. discussion, the first case is VOA 143-2486. The address being 46 to 48 Leo M. Birmingham Parkway. This is an article, a BPDA Article 80 project. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Rufo. An attorney in Boston at Smith, Duggan, Cornell, and Gallup, 88 Broad Street in Boston. And with me uh, on, on uh, today is uh, uh, the uh, developer, applicant, uh, Arx Urban, and their team, uh, Benjamin Moore, uh, Benjamin Mall, M-O-L-L, Danny Mall, and uh, Peter McCauley, also our architect from Embark, uh, Dan Artigas. Just quickly, uh, this project uh, proposes a, uh, a small project of uh, six stories on the corner of Lothrop Street and Leo Birmingham Parkway, and uh, the construction of 38 uh, residences, uh, all four rent apartments, uh, as well as 13 uh, at-grade parking spaces with the option of adding seven additional uh, semi-automated so-called stackers uh, to the parking area to make 20 parking spaces. Um, the uh, Article 80 small project review process was begun on February 8th, 2022. Uh, we had um, public meetings, two public meetings, uh, one initially and then after receiving a lot of uh, community input, uh, we had uh, rev revised the project and Mr. Benji Mo will take you through that. We had a second public meeting on that. We also had an open house uh, in the neighborhood. Um, we had four meetings uh, combined with the Brighton Austin Improvement Association and the Austin Civic Association. Uh, uh, finally, or in, in that process, we went before the uh, BPDA board on September 15th, 2022, and obtained their approval, the BPDA board approval. Uh, we have filed uh, previously 71 letters of support from community members uh, in support of the project. Um, the zoning relief, uh, just quickly, uh, are uh, four different uh, categories that have been uh, tripped, if you will, uh, by the project. One is the use, multifamily residential in this CC1 zone is conditional. Uh, uh, the FAR for a ratio uh, limit is 1.0 and we are seeking 3.11. Uh, the height and the stories um, are uh, limited to 35 feet. We're looking to uh, build a building uh, consistent with the other buildings in the area, 69 feet in six stories. And finally, the parking under the code, uh, Article 51, would require 76 parking spaces. And as I mentioned, we're proposing 13 parking spaces, et cetera. Uh, finally, um, through uh, uh, community involvement of um, uh, the uh, various neighbors, uh, Mayor's Office of Housing, uh, City Council, Liz Breeden's office, et cetera. Um, we arrived at an IDP, affordable housing uh, mix of uh, combined of 18.4% uh, with five IDP units at 70% of AMI and two IDP units at 100% of AMI for a total of seven of the 38 units uh, restricted with uh, IDP restrictions. So with that, um, I would like to introduce the um, uh, representative of the developer, Arx Urban, uh, Benji Moll, who will take you through the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, go to page three, please. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, thank you for having me today. Um, we're thrilled to present this project after a two-year community and article 80 process. You can see here 46 Leo is at the corner of Lothrop and Leo and Birmingham Parkway. 
and is really the last parcel in this development corridor uh, to either be developed or receive approval. So we gave great care and thought um, to our massing and, and to our, our, our project here, thinking through the other projects that have been approved or are under construction right now along the Oberman Camp Parkway. Uh, next page, please. Um, you can see here that the current improvements on the site are it's the state police barracks. The state police left the site uh, earlier this year, so leaving a vacant two-story uh, building uh, that's, that's largely built out as a jail, so it would be very challenging to use the existing improvements. And you can see the 50 Leo, or 50 Leo uh, project right next door, which really served as, as uh, the cornerstone and how we thought about the massing for this project. Um, and how we kind of responded to, to neighborhood comments and feedback based off of the project next door. So uh, next slide, please. Um, so uh, as Mr. Rufo mentioned, 38-unit uh, project, the FAR, so the, the density of the site is slightly lower than the project 50 Leo next door that uh, is fully built out and fully sold condominiums. Uh, and we spent a lot of time thinking through how to acknowledge that design, but also to step the project back a little bit um, and to um, acknowledge the uh, crosswalk uh, that is, is, is being built uh, right here. So the indentation of our project really uh, is, is captures kind of the, the pedestrian activity uh, right in this corner here. And then further, we step the project down back into the, the residential neighborhood behind us. Uh, based off of community feedback. And so if you go to the next slide, you can see overall, uh, because this project has been going on for, for so long, um, from a, a community standpoint, we were actually one of the first to increase above the 13% affordability level. Um, and so we're, we're thrilled to, to, to be able to exceed what is required under the, the IDP. Um, the project will be sustainably constructed uh, we spent a lot of time thinking about widening the sidewalks and maintaining the setbacks that the other development projects along the Birmingham have. Um, in addition to removing a, a very, very large curb cut uh, that the state police currently utilize uh, for, for the site, um, which will significantly improve, improve pedestrian safety. All of our projects have a large public art installation um, and will be driven by a community RFP process once the project is complete. Um, and, and Arts Urban is incredibly proud of uh, being working uh, on our projects in a progressive uh, transportation and, and thinking about mobility in a progressive way. So here we will be subsidizing um, public transit passes. We'll have an electric vehicle car sharing, and then we have uh, one, more than one and a half biking spaces per unit uh, above and beyond what's required under uh, design guidelines here. Next slide, please. Um, so Mr. Rufo mentioned we had an extensive community process. I think one of the things that we were uh, particularly happy about was right after filing our small project review, we hosted a, a large open uh, community open house where we had over 70 folks come um, and provide feedback based off of the project in a pretty informal way, um, which really helped shape how we thought about the project and really took the tone down from some of the community conversations, which uh, we're, we're very thankful for, uh, for everybody's help. Next slide, please. And so overall, you can see the step back in the rear of the building to the, the residential community, which uh, again is a little bit different from the project right next door. Uh, we added significant green space behind the building. We added an additional two green roofs for our community member, uh, for our, our uh, building tenants um, and committed to a, a full solar uh, power building as well. Uh, but overall, we spent a lot of time working with the community as well as with Council Breeden's office uh, to really kind of improve, improve the project. The project has started as 47 units, then was reduced to 43, and then ultimately to 38 based off of that community feedback. Um, in that, the, the, the units were, were, were uh, made a little bit larger as well based off community feedback. Then we also added a dedicated pickup and drop off zone in, in front of the projects. Um, next slide, please. So here you can see uh, some of our design precedents really trying to create a, a warm and rich building uh, that accentuates that uh, the sidewalk um, and the crosswalk and the pedestrian experience uh, with, with that seating area right in front of the building. Next slide, please. 
Here's a ground floor plan, a small lobby off of Leo Birmingham Parkway. There's also an entrance, uh, the, the curb cut for parking in the building is on Lothrop Street, or 13 parking spaces as we mentioned. One of the things that we are trying to do in all of our development projects is prioritize uh, people over parking. And so we have the ability, if demand necessitates and if we need to, to increase the number of parking spaces through a semi-automated system. So we've uh, designed the project such that we have the clearances to do that. But ultimately, one of the things we're trying to do is get people off the roads and try to get folks living in our buildings who live a car-free lifestyle. And so in doing that, we'll only provide uh, 13 spark, uh, spaces up front. In addition, you can see the street trees and, and the additional green space between our project 50 Leo Birmingham and the residential neighborhood um, that maintain the 20 foot setback under the current uh, the current code. Next slide, please. Here's generally a, a general unit layout of each floor. Uh, we have a mix of studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms. Uh, larger average unit sizes that I think are, are typically seen based off of community feedback and the desire here to have slightly larger units. Next slide. Again, here's the landscape plan. You can see uh, there's this outdoor space between 50 Leo Birmingham Parkway that will be um, will, will be lit and have movable furniture. So have an, an outdoor space for our community there as well as some, uh, some large street trees and arbor vitaes planted to provide a buffer between our project and the neighbors. Next slide, please. And here's a general view of some of the design precedent from the landscape. Next slide. And our, our project uh, will abide by and exceed the complete street skyline. So 15 foot uh, sidewalk on the Leo Birmingham continues that uh, pedestrian experience that the other projects along the street have, as well as maintain 11 uh, plus foot sidewalks on um, Lothrop Street, uh, which will, will make that pedestrian um, experience significantly better. Next slide. So I believe that's all we have for you today. Uh, Mr. Rufo already talked about the zoning summary, but we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, I believe, is it Mr. Carter from BPDA is on? Who can walk us through the BPDA process? Yes, thank you. Uh, we held uh, several meetings for this project uh, virtually uh, through the BPDA, posted in all our normal sites. Uh, this project received a fair bit of community support. Uh, as the development team touched upon, there were some concerns from the neighbor directly to the year abutting the project um, and they worked with them to address them including moving the site of that transformer and stepping the building down as it moves there to try and preserve as much uh, their light as possible um, we expect that this project uh, should go forward and uh, we believe that it is uh, a valuable project within the neighborhood thank you thank you any questions from the board um, Madam Chair, um, just one question about the parking and the breakdown of it um, and the allocation, if we would, again. Yes, so we have we have 13 parking spaces. You know, we're trying to abide uh, by kind of BPDA guidelines of having 0.5 uh, parking ratio or below. I think one of the compromises we made with the community um, was that if demand necessitates, meaning if everybody in the building has a, a car we have the ability to add an automated parking uh, system into our garage just based off of the design uh, but we're really trying to be thoughtful about uh, how we construct and think about parking and all of our projects because we're big believers that if you build it they will come but otherwise we're trying to incentivize folks uh, to, to to live car free lives thank you for the clarification and good luck with that and is that essentially stackers? Like basically you have the ability to double the capacity through stackers or? Actually here it would be more of a puzzle, an automated puzzle system um, where, where you're able basically to, uh, it's like an automated stacker system. Um, yeah. uh, to interrupt you just with Embark, if I may, um, mm -hmm. this semi-automated system and our 20 parking count uh, does not require anyone to move another person's car to access. Uh, so it's a little bit more 
uh, reserved uh, and feasible for a multifamily project like this. Okay. Uh, Mr. D'Amico? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Bob D'Amico, BCD. Uh, should they um, change their mind on the new parking spaces? I'm assuming that they have to come in front of the CBA, is that correct? Up here? That's a question for Javier. Uh, that I am not 100% sure. Uh, can you clarify what the CBA is again? I'm sorry. He's talking about the ZBA, us. Oh, and yeah, the yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I think you do. Uh, you would have to come in front of the Board of Appeals to change the number of spaces. Okay. Uh, is there an, uh, any other questions from the board? I, I yes. have I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, are you the same developer for thirty and fifty? No, that's a different developer. Okay, so the two properties are different developers, and so this is you're you're the only developer for forty six, correct? That's right. The, the, okay. uh, the developer for 46 is the same developer you may have seen in the in the uh, presentation for 525 Lincoln Street, which is uh, it's well under construction. That's you know further down uh, in Alston. So that's the same developer. That project was approved and it's it's nearing completion. And Benji Mo is uh, directing that project as well. But in terms of I the, mean the uh, reason the reason I ask is because yeah. the the buildings adjacent to them have very similar kind of density um, in relation to then the other kind of smaller scale residential. And I was wondering if there was any kind of coordination um, in regards to the ground floor uh, programming. So right now, the residential building at 46 is the, the residential kind of asset would be just a fitness, a fitness facility um and given that this is kind of a zone under commercial um i just wanted to understand this project in relationship to the recent buildings in its adjacent yeah, so I think and i guess that and i guess that's also bpd's kind of review and purview like you can't just build housing and it's most kind of insular you have to look at what are the dynamics of community, how does that then begin to affect the parks? Um, so the, these are just more comments. Uh, and so I have a couple of more questions. So if you can just answer that one, that would be good. Yeah, so so I think I think that's a great question. I think we we utilized um, the team at Embark and, and Dan Artigas, who is the architect uh, of the 50 Leo, Leo Birmingham Parkway project next door. So. Dan, if you don't mind, why don't you you provide a But that's a different context. developer. But that's a different developer, right? Yes. Dan was the architect for 4750, but is different development teams. Yes, yes. Okay. Different developer, different development teams. I think we wanted some continuity from the design aspect and really an understanding of exactly uh, okay. what it's done. So um, and Dan spent uh, quite a bit of time working with the BPDA design team thinking through this and 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 Dan, if you, if you wouldn't mind, would you provide a little bit more context on that front? Yes, of course. Um, you know, having the ability to work on, on both these projects pretty quick, pretty quickly um, after each other uh, allowed us to have an input on the, this entire corridor uh, and uh, see the, the, the progression of how um, the parkway is uh, being redesigned to provide pedestrian and bike access, as well as the ongoing discussion on um, whether or not smaller scale commercial spaces are appropriate for this stretch of Leo Birmingham. And that was a conversation that we had with both the community and the BPDA. Uh, based on our conversations, I feel that um, commercial space in this project or these projects along uh, Leo Birmingham outside of the anchoring commercial retail spaces as you go towards New Balance and then towards the um, the raceway and the Western Ave corridor uh, was was something that was considered. Uh, I believe you know as we developed um, both of these projects in tandem, uh, it was really looking towards 
the corner of Western Ave and Western Ave itself as uh, the basis for commercial development on this stretch. And it was looked at uh, historically along Leo Birmingham how smaller scale commercial spaces weren't really viable. So we were, we were kind of tasked um, with uh, providing amenities for uh, the building itself, but not commercial spaces, which uh, might not be viable for this stretch. Okay. And then um, in regards to, uh, let's say, contributions in regards to community benefits, was there, I, I think, I re if I recall, you had a contribution to the Little League. Um, am I, is that correct, to the Little League? So, so there is, there's a few contributions. Um, one is $38,000 to the parks, um, uh, $10,000 to Blue Bikes program. Um, we have roughly a $50,000 uh, contribution. We have to provide a 25% design plan um, in, in tandem with the BPDA, BTD, and uh, DCR in terms of rethinking and designing the, the Lothrop and Leo Birmingham intersection. Um, so that was really the cornerstone of our mitigation plan, working with them to think through how to further uh, the transportation improvements of this corridor. Uh, $10,000 to the also Brighton CDC as well, um, who we've worked with on other projects. Um, and then here again, trying to be really progressive from uh, setting the tone from an alternative transit standpoint, providing a shared electric vehicle, um, subsidizing basically uh, public uh, use of, of public transportation and then having significantly above uh, required uh, bike parking per unit. So that's our, that was our general mitigation package. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Because I, I think there's an opportunity here and I'm glad the BPDA is here to uh, also speak on behalf of your project to, you know, now we have a lot of residents coming in and there's an opportunity to really use the open spaces very right across your property behind you and make improvements for your residents. Um, because you noted that you had adequate open open space at the rear, but I would say your 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 asset is really the open public spaces outside of your building. And so I'm really glad to hear that that's com that part that your contribution is is contributing to that improvement, that infrastructural improvement and green space. I don't, I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Yes, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, to a proponent, the project has seven IDP units, five are for 70% AMI and two are for 100% AMI. So if you can talk more about what are the reasons why the project is not providing some of those IDP units for lower income families in the 30, 40, 50, or 60% AMIs. Yeah, I think, I think that's a really great question. And Arts Urban has a track record of we're building affordable housing across the city. Uh, we build both affordable, capital A affordable, and then market rate housing. And so we are really kind of thinking a lot about feasibility. I think to change our affordability requirement here would require significant uh, subsidy. And we're developing this project on behalf of the, the landowner who's owned the land here for uh, almost 10 years and, and uh, wants to develop a market rate project, not an affordable housing project. So um, it was a, a significant, uh, we ended up at that, that IDP uh, mix based on significant feedback from the BPDA as well as from uh, Council Breeden's office. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, can I have public testimony? Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Frank Mendoza here, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, also in Brighton Liaison. We'd like to defer to the judgment of the board at this time, but uh, I can say that the applicant met with our two local civic associations, being the Alston Civic Association and the Brighton Alston Improvement Association. The Alston Civic Association sent a letter 
uh, to the board earlier today expressing no clear consensus and therefore they defer to the judgment of the board. Uh, they did mention that those in the ACA that were in opposition cited concerns regarding density and scale, the use of Boston-based contractors, lack of off-street parking and green space and local traffic flow and public safety. Uh, as for the Brighton Wilson Improvement Association, I believe their zoning chair, Annabella Gomes, is in attendance today to testify as to their stance. Uh, with that said, again, we'll defer to the uh, judgment of the board. Thank you very much. Great. Is Ms. Gomez on, uh, Jessica? Oh, yes, sorry, go ahead. Um, second. Gomez. Annabella, go ahead. Madam Chair, members of the board, the BIA uh, voted to not support this project. We have many concerns with this project. Uh, the only good thing from this project is the seven IDP units, but we feel strongly that for seven units, we're giving up uh, too much density. It is located in a green overlay district, but there is no green space on the project. The green space you see in the back, if you look closely, you'll see it's artificial turf, which I believe that the mayor's office is very much against. It's not green space. The trees are not on the property. Um, the meetings were held in July, the public meetings. The other meeting that they had was held at a bar. If you look at the photos, most of the people are holding al alcoholic beverages. And it was a very comfortable for everybody to support, but not really listening to the direct neighbors who had major concerns, especially the house abutting it. Uh, with the height of the building and the fact that this property is using every inch for density. Uh, so we voted against this project and uh, we hope the board votes against it as well. Thank you. And any other raised hands? Yep, a minor, go ahead. You all set? Okay, I'll go to Anthony. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Tony Desidoro representing the Austin uh, Civic Association. Uh, the Office of Neighborhood Services did a good job of summarizing the letter that we sent earlier. Uh, we were split right down the middle in terms of voting. And uh, as Frank uh, mentioned to the board, uh, those in our position, uh, he did a good job of citing the concerns off of our letter. I, I would also just throw in one of the uh, so therefore we're going to defer judgment to the board just want to throw in another general issue and i'm sure this is something the board hears throughout the city and uh, uh, an ongoing concern and uh, we like to think that the city has some influence over the process but not a lot but obviously the concern is as we continue with these transit oriented projects and as was mentioned earlier this is a strip of uh, uh, Birmingham Parkway going into Western Ave where there is considerable projects in the pipeline being constructed, uh, constructed being planned uh, that are transit oriented in nature. And obviously an ongoing community concern is that the state is going to uh, uh, adjust service levels to all these new people that will be coming in because obviously, yes, we do want them to walk if necessary, take bikes or, or take public transportation. But just to throw that out, that there's continuing concern uh, about the state's uh, ability, given all that we've heard in the last few months, of being able to align service levels to all this new development that's going in with very low parking ratios. Thank you. Um, Paul and then Thomas. Paul? Hello. Hi. Yes, can go you ahead. hear me? Yes. Hi, I'm Paul Adams. I um, I own the house right abutting this uh, proposed project. Um, thank you for hearing me. Um, this project's gonna like I can see the sunset right from my door now. I won't be able to see it. There's only gonna be 13 feet in between the condo building and this new building. Um, there's gonna be a huge shadow that's gonna take all the sun away from my house um on this um it's just you know people on Lothar street they park from radius there's no parking whatsoever 13 spaces for 76. i understand what benji's saying he wants people not to use cars people are going to use cars um it is where they have the 
the artificial turf, from what I'm understanding, they might actually use that for two parking spaces, which would put the exhaust fumes right into my house, into my backyard. I'm not sure if that's the truth or not, but that's what I'm understanding. Also, right off a little trip, they're going to be taking the right into the garage. Are they going to have that lit all night? I mean, the light going to come right into my house? That's, you know, horrible. The whole thing is horrible to me. Um, the other one is 30 is, is approved. This is going to be approved. This is blocking my house in. We've been here for 45 years, three generations of family. I just, you know, want, I, it's going to completely mess our way of life up here. Um, they're putting a transformer in the ground. I understand that. From what I understand, the transformer makes a buzz and a hum sound. Plus the uh, safety, is it going to blow up under there? I don't, I don't know what that's about. Um, also, the 71 letters of support. We looked at all the support letters. They're from Roxbury, they're from Quincy. Just like Annabelle said, it was at the bar and it was just a piece of paper and the people signed while they were drinking. The, the people that put those comments for are not even from the neighborhood. Um, the de I'm Thomas and then Sal. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Thomas Leonard, I live at 50 Aldi Street in Alston. Uh, I oppose uh, the 46 uh, Leo project. Uh, two purposes for opposition. Uh, I do not believe that the green space proposed by the developer is significant enough to uh, uh, offer a carbon offset for the building uh, being placed here. I'm concerned about a heat island effect, and uh, I think that the green space needs to be increased speci specifically with trees before the project can be approved. Uh, second point, uh, this, this is the same developer for 525 Lincoln Street, and with 525 Lincoln Street, only 12% of the contractors working on that project are Boston based. I did ask during the Austin Civic Association meeting if the contractor for 46 Leo would be committed to uh, hiring Boston based union contractors and the developer was unwilling to make that commitment. I believe until the green space is addressed and the labor commitment is addressed, this project should not move forward. Thank okay. you for your time. Okay, Sal. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I, I live at uh, 48 Waverly Street, which is just down the street from here. And I'm opposed to the project the way it is. The project just maxes it out. I mean, the, the 13 feet between buildings is because of the other building being stepped back from the property line. The space in back is actually pavers that the weeds can grow through. And the parking garage is open to the rear facing that little uh, house with the family in it so cars yes can park out there but also the garage vents out there because it's open to the back it, to me I'm not against development I, I think you know redevelopment that property is fine but the way it is is just maxing it out one of the board members asked about the AMI the IDP units because this makes money this way you know, the other renters just pay a little bit more and they give a little break to some units, but it's not for uh, working class poor people. And as far as the parking, that's great if everybody would bike and take the tea to, to work. But we've seen and lived with uh, the radius, which is right next to this. 50 Leo has been open now for, for months, maybe half a year. And we see that there's not one parking spot since it's open on the street, on Leo Birmingham Parkway. So that doesn't fly. And, and one, one last thing, please. Somebody spoke to the letters of support. If the board looked at the 72 or 78 letters of support, I looked at all the addresses other than two people that were at the Notch Brewery that lived close by. You couldn't be further away from this project so I don't buy any thank, of thank that. Thank you. We, we, we understand that point. Thank you. Any okay. other raised hands, Jessica? Additional raised hands? No additional raised hands. Uh, can the applicant address uh, these concerns, uh, the green space, setbacks, uh, you know, the light, the humming noises, et cetera? Can you, can you just address that? Yes, yes. And, and, also, and also local participation percentage of MBE. Yeah. Um, yes. So, so, I, so I think we'll talk about that first um, on our other project uh, that they're referring to. We are in compliance with the Boston residents' jobs calls. 
policy. In fact, we're significantly exceeding currently the, the people of color uh, participation, um, and we are uh, we have been commended by the Boston Residents Jobs Policy uh, Oversight Committee for uh, for how we're doing on that on that project. So uh, I'm happy to share further further detail with the board, but I think. From our standpoint, um, we are certainly above board on that front. Um, I think from a green space stand standpoint and from uh, listening to the, uh, the abutters, um, we spent quite a bit of time. We, we reduced the massing of the project from 47 to 38 units. We worked with Council Breeden's office and, and with, with other folks in the community to add two additional green spaces to both our building for with, with outdoor space behind the building, as well as we removed parking uh, between our project um, and Mr. Adams' house. Uh, I'm not sure why or where the reference to turf is coming from, um, but the intent is that we maintain a 20-foot setback underneath the current zoning code between our building and the, uh, the abutters, um, and that would be wholly uh, landscapes with green space um, as well as the additional great space that we added between our building and 50 Leo Birmingham. These were all uh, moves that were made during the community process um, based off of this feedback. Uh, and I guess what, what, one final point as well is that the contribution $38,000 parks, right? We recognize that a large portion um, of, of our green space um, outside of what we have on site is. Uh, that that will be utilized is in, in the, the budding park. And so that contribution will hope, uh, to Hansi's point earlier, to improve uh, that park. So, so just for clarification, there are no artificial turf. It's just because it's on your slide 12. But there's oh. no artificial turf on your project. We're happy, we're happy to remove that or have okay, the proviso. Um, I also think there's no current green space on the site right now. If you look on uh, one of the last few slides, uh, it is currently a heat desert, right? And so adding green roofs and green outdoor spaces to our projects, we acknowledge exactly what, what we're saying. I think the key for us is we're in a housing crisis and we're trying to balance the need for new housing and as well as kind of all, all of the, uh, the, the community feedback here. And so we did the best we could from uh, a massing standpoint and reducing the massing, adding as much green spaces would, would allow for a feasible project here. Thank you. Other questions from the board before we vote? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I would like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA recommendation listed on the memorandum that includes seven IDP affordable rental units and community benefits. May I have a second? A second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Bedabraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes, the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Before we continue with the rest of the 1130 cases, excuse me, uh, we'll ask if there are any withdrawals or deferrals requested from the 1 p.m. hearing. <laughs> hearing none, then um, we will go back to 1130. Um, as was no previously noted, 58 Murdoch Street is being withdrawn, which takes us to case BOA 139-5905. The address being 4 Haynes Street is the applicant and or their the representative present. Thank you, uh, Stembridge. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Here on behalf of the applicants, uh, Tom Walsh and Peter Ryan. I also have Adam Glassman, the architect here as well. Uh, what you're looking at in this rendering is a proposal 
to combine, which is the left-hand building, combine two uh, existing empty parcels at four and six hangs that would create uh, one new uh, lot and would be known as four hangs. Uh, we're proposing to erect four residential condominium units with three ground level parking spaces. Um, you can just see um, on this slide as well. Um, you can go to the next slide, uh, Madam Ambassador. Um, the building to the right of it, the smaller building, uh, is our build, my client's building as well. That's eight and 10 hangs. Everything as you go down on this side of the street is four story, across the street as well, and in the rear of us. Um, just to go over uh, the layouts in the first floor, we have our garage, we have our parking, and we have our, if you can stay in this slide for a moment, we have our bike uh, storage area, trash area, and a lift to go up to the second level. Uh, on the second floor houses units one and two. As we scaled the project down a bit and made modifications with the community, those units are now studio units. That's a 543 square foot studio and 543 foot studio with a deck. Um, as we go up to the unit three on the third floor and unit four, those are bi-level units on the third and fourth floor. Those are the larger units at three bedroom, 1,212 square feet. If you go to the next slide, please. Just so uh, the board has some context, you can see the blue highlighted area uh, is the lot at uh, the empty parcel now. You can see sort of the mix of housing stock in that area, but primarily up and down that block and along Webster Street are four story or larger apartment style complex buildings. Uh, if you go to the next slide, please. And you can just see that's the empty parcel as it stands now. Um, just a front view. Next slide, please. Uh, we just get into the, the plans. Um, just to point out, we worked extensively with the Jeffries Point Neighborhood Association as well as our uh, butters to come up with the exterior design that they wanted to see, which is that brick exterior um, and the top material. Um, we also, uh, we do have three interior spaces. Those are full spaces. We also made commitments that we would agree to um, the parking restric restriction program uh, with BTD of uh, available. We will um, also look for alternative areas for additional parking um, on the lots and, um, and then the commitments to maintain that exterior design um, that neighbors wanted to see. Uh, just to go over the variances uh, required, uh, we have a, a use variance. It is a 3F district. We're proposing four units, but that is common up and down. Uh, that block, uh, our minimum uh, lot size at 1,800 square feet uh, would be undersized. We require a, a variance for lot size. FAR, we're at 2.3. Um, our building height, um, we, we really did try to keep uh, the, store, uh, the height is down as low as we can. Um, we're at 40 feet um, at three and a half stories. Um, and then we did have our side yard violation um, we're at one foot, two and a half would be required. And our rear yard, we are still maintaining eight feet, but 10 would be required. And then for parking, uh, we do have three spaces because we wanted to make four would be required. We wanted to make those spaces really functional um, to, to come in and have access in and out uh, and to make sure there was enough fun. Uh, I can pause now and answer any questions. Oh, uh, just to point out, sorry, on the top floor, there are two exclusive roof decks by hatch. Uh, those are 13 by 14. Those are exclusively to the third and uh, unit number three. Thank you. Are there questions from the board? Uh, I would like to hear um, BPDA's recommendation or feedback on this project. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman of the Board, Jeff Hampton, BPDA. We recommended to not uh, prejudice uh, for a three story uh, structure at the end of the street and maybe a three setback uh, on the pro on that side property line. Um, so, understanding how most of the street is now for storage, we're still trying to keep it at three stories for the same production. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Hearing none, may we have public testimony? 
Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time, Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board, some background information on the community process. Uh, ONS hosted a butters meeting on October 27th, 2022. We had four butters join the call. The main concerns from butters that were mentioned uh, was parking and density. Butters did mention how the developers team have been very responsive and easy to work with though. Um, the applicant met with the Jeffries Point Neighborhood Association multiple times over this course of the community process. The association voted to support the proposal with 23 residents in favor and 17 in opposition. In their support letter, they stated that the developer has accommodated many of the direct abutters requests. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Sebastian? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Sebastian Parra with Councilor Clerk's office. And based on Jeffrey's Point Neighborhood Association's vote, the council would like to go in support of this project. Thank you. Minor? I see Mr. D'Amico's hand up. Are you okay. Okay, go ahead, Bob. Oh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Bob D'Amico, uh, ATD. Uh, Jeff, where, what street is the curb cut on? Maybe I missed it. So, so it's right on Haynes Street, uh, Bob. If you pull up the rendering, the there, there's an existing curb cut now. We're just shifting it. But um, if we, I don't know if we have a copy side. There's a front garage that opens. It would be enclosed with everything in the interior. So it's about 12 feet across. Because the uh, the plans that I saw um, showed an 18 foot curb cut. That's um, that's kind of large. Yeah. No. It's it's 12, and that could be the existing curb cut that's there now. Okay, and then my final comment is you're right at the edge of Haynes, and um, you know that uh, Haynes is a one way. Mm -hmm. So if uh, they're coming out of the uh, garage and they make a left turn, um, that's kind of dicey because if there should ever be a conflict of any kind, the person coming out of the garage is 100% wrong. So they're going to have to take a left turn out of uh, the garage to comply with the uh, yep. with the law. So we, 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 we purposely pushed the garage on the other side, on that right side of the building, so um, they would be able to make that, that radius turn. Can you have a sign that says uh, left turn only? 100%. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve and Teresa. Hello. Hi, go ahead. Can you state your name and address for the record and tell us if you're in support of opposition briefly? Yes, sure. Uh, Steve Holt, um, 68D Marginal Street. I am an, a butter um, to this project. I'm uh, speaking in um, in support of this project um, between October uh, 2022 and April of this year. We met with the uh, developers multiple times. Um, through both the processes with the Jeffries Point Neighborhood Association uh, general meetings, the planning and zoning, zoning subcommittee meetings, and also um, uh, individually and throughout, like on email and um, over the phone. And um, they were very accommodating and made significant changes based on our feedback especially around um, parking accommodations, the exterior uh, kind of look and feel aesthetic of the, um, of the property. And um, um, they also worked with us to uh, create a um, construction uh, management plan that will, um, I think, allay many of the concerns that abutters had around the construction and ongoing maintenance of the property. So uh, I, um, I support this project and um, 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 have enjoyed working with the, these developers. Thank you. Thank you. Teresa? Uh, hi, I'm Teresa Drum. I live on Cottage Street, Aiden Cottage. And just to resonate the same, um, I, I worked with the developers and they've listened to the neighbors regarding the design, which I'm extremely happy about. And as far as the parking, my understanding is there's three parking spots and it is really close to the water taxi and tea stop, which is generally what that tech building is gonna bring into East A. So I'm totally in support. Thank you. Thank you. Brian and then um, David. Afternoon, Madam Chairwoman and Board. I'm Brian Williamson, 19th Street. I'm in a bar. 
Um, just re repeating what was just said, said by the two previous people, this, this applicant, Tom and Peter and you, Jeff, have been tremendous to work with. Um, they also built 10 Hanes. Um, were to, they're just great neighbors. Uh, they were soliciting feedback during construction of that project as well. It's right across the street from us. And um, they've been a pleasure to work with. I, I just also want to reiterate that uh, the work they did to sort of redesign and listen to neighbors' feedback has been tremendous. It's going to add so much um, more aesthetically to the street. And um, my wife and I are in full support of this project. Thank you. David, go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is David Lank. I live at 65 Gove Street, and I also own a few other properties uh, in the immediate vicinity a few blocks away. And I want to speak in uh, enthusiastic support of the project. I think it's the right scale. I think it improves the neighborhood. I think it's beautiful, and I'm uh, going to do a lot to in improve our, our little nook. Thank you. Jessica, how many more raised hands are there? Uh, those were the last two. Um, let me just get to the list. Minor, OK, well, are you all set? Uh, thank you, Madam Ambassador. Uh, my first representative of the Cabinet of will run a go and record support. Thank That's you. the last of the raised hands. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? I, I do have a quick question. Um, are you the same developer of Seven Haynes Street? Um, so I think it has brick building and standing scene. No, I believe that's a different developer. They develop next door. Yeah, they're next to you. So it looks like materially. Oh, yeah. It looks like materially you're working with that. Correct, yeah. Um, are, are you, uh, so my only observation is that um, the fourth floor massing at the rear feels like an additional story and maybe that's what you were getting in terms of BPDA feedback in terms of trying to maintain the three story. I, I agree that there's a lot of, there are buildings out there that works with the proposed massing. Are you, would you be open to working with BPDA on the fourth floor kind of massing um, at the rear? That would potentially mean either losing square footage on your bedroom units or reducing it by one. Not the units, bedroom on the fourth floor. Um, we, we actually were, so as we went through this process of making changes, we, we actually had a bring down to the two studios below. So we were hoping to make up some square footage and the, and the Jeffries Point Neighborhood Association really has been asking for more family size units. Right, but I, in terms of massing, in terms of the character of the neighborhood, the three bedroom units on the full floor to the front works, but the one yeah. to the rear, you go up in terms sure. of a feeling like a story. So it's it would mean to adjust the rear um, I'm just making some observations. So, yeah, I mean, we'd be happy to work with BPDA on suggestions if that's, you know, okay. to cut right. where we could. If we right. would okay. move the, the three bedrooms if possible. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I would like to put forward a motion of approval <laughs> with a proviso to have BTD review on the parking and BPDA review paying special attention to the fourth floor rear massing so that it works within the context and character of the neighborhood. Thank you. May I have a second? Thanks, second. Okay. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Petabraza? Yes. Ms. Wewo? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Next, we have three companion cases. The first being case BOA 129025. With the, with the address being 92 Walde, Waldemar Ave, Avenue. The second being case BOA 1290226, the address being 96 Waldemar Avenue. And the third companion case is BOA 1290229, with the address of 104 Waldemar Avenue. 
is the applicant and or their representative present. Thank you, uh, Ms. Stembers. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with a business address of 11 Beacon Street. Here on behalf of Ricky Crespo and the Crespo Group, uh, the developer and owner, and Eric Zacherson with Context Design. Um, just to qu quickly reiterate the proposal, there are three separate lots, um, and we're proposing to raise the existing dated uh, structures on them to erect three separate three family buildings. Um, if we go to the next slide, please, uh, Madam Ambassador. This just shows uh, the existing conditions of the building. Uh, extensive renovations would be needed on all of these lots. Uh, structures you can also see they, they don't even um, comply with the existing uh, code or what's allowed under the existing. So they're very very small. Um, you can see the sizes, the curb cut, it's all of that um, hot top on front and the middle one at 96. And then they also have curb cuts on the other two proposal, uh, proposed buildings as well. Um, so if we go to the next slide, please. This particular area, although zoned 1F, you can go to the next slide, I'm sorry. Uh, has a mix of housing stock. Right here is uh, part of the proposed development of the 10,000 units from Suffolk Downs. That's directly across the street from us. If you go to the next slide, please. This is an apartment complex uh, directly diagonal from us as well, the same street across the street. Uh, that's a 20 to 30 unit apartment complex with parking. If we could go to the next slide, please. And these are just some other projects, uh, 75 Waldemar, which is 16 unit at the corner. Uh, that's the 16 Waldemar at the corner. Uh, and then the one on Wally Street. These are all multifamily residential buildings all along that corridor. If we go to the next slide, please, Madam Ambassador, this shows the proposal now, if we can stay on this slide. Uh, these are the three buildings and we really wanted to make these to fit and blend in with the community context. And although uh, we'll show you another slide, but right now if we could stay on this, there's a one family to our right. The building that's blue next to 92 is an existing three family building. My client went through an extensive community process um, trying to work with the group, uh, the Orient Heights Civic, to try to make changes and modify this project. When we started and how it was originally advertised were three five unit buildings. Um, and there was an affordable component to that. Um, my client is, uh, wants to promote affordability, so even though we reduced uh, this project, we still are keeping one affordable unit uh, voluntary at 92 on the first round level. Um, the other buildings we tried to blend in, as I had mentioned, there's also nine parking spaces. There'd be two separate curb cuts on the front of the property that would lead to the back and house uh, three three spaces uh, that would go with each building. Uh, we also significantly reduced the height massing of the building, so we took off an entire floor. So these are now three-story buildings, which is we've removed the height variance required. Uh, in this particular area, um, although some of the other buildings uh, that we showed in the original picture were small, uh, the building to the left of us would actually blend right in so we'd be at the same height. We're actually below the 35 foot requirement right now. We would be proposing 33 feet in height for each building. Um, all of the units are very similar. These are all uh, two bedroom units at 1,000 square feet, 1,230 square feet. Uh, and 1,230 square feet. They have small front decks. We removed uh, all roof decks on the project as well, because we know that was a concern for neighbors. Um, we've really tried to reduce the variances that are needed. Um, we do have, because of the use variance, because there are three families required, our FAR is at 1.26, which has been reduced, but still requires relief. Um, side yard varies from five foot six and seven to three foot six, so we, we would need variances for that. And then parking, we're at one for one, um, but 1 1.5 would be required. As I mentioned, this would still allow us to have one affordable unit uh, on 92 uh, that would go with this project as well. Um, I, can, I went over the layouts of the units and sizes. I can pause now to answer any questions that the board may have. 
Thank you. Uh, Mr. Drago, can I ask uh, how, if there were any changes to this from the last time you presented and, and it was deferred? So I, I didn't present, uh, Madam Chair, so I'm oh, deferred. Sorry. Deferred, I think, was the board size. Uh, we, we got hit a couple of times. We did to make changes all along from the, you know, to, we deferred a few times on this project, but then the board uh, was a short board a couple of times as well. Okay. Right. Any questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, uh, let's uh, get public testimony first. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, at this time, Mayor's Office likes to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. Uh, ONS hosted two of Butters meetings for this project on March 29th of 2022 and May 26th of 2022. Uh, this project reduced its size um, from the original proposal throughout the community process to three buildings with three units each and one voluntary affordable unit. Uh, Butters uh, were in opposition to this pro proposal as they stated uh, during both meetings that the project they feel is too dense for this street, then it goes against the character of the neighborhood, which mostly consists of single families. They also voiced concerns regarding the lack of parking in the area. Um, a director butter also expressed concerns over the height, density, and excavation during the construction, voicing some worries uh, that it may impact a retaining wall. Uh, the project presented to the Orient Heights Neighborhood Council in March, April, and July of 2022. The association voted to oppose the project with 25 residents against and two in favor. Uh, the civic expressed concerns about the potential loss of single family homes in the area. Our office received 12 letters in opposition, four from Waldemar Ave, uh, one from the Orient Heights Neighborhood Council, three from Faywood Ave, one from Wordsworth Street, two from Monto Morenci Ave, and one from Orient Ave. Uh, with that information, we'll defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Sebastian Parr of the Councilor Coletti's office. Based on Orient High Neighborhood Council's opposition and strong community opposition, the council would like to oppose this project as well. Thank you. Minor. Uh, thank you, Madam Ambassador. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, minor parts for the Carpenters Union. We'd like to put under support of this project. Thanks. Okay. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, the City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty, echoing the sentiments of Council Coletta's office, as well as the overwhelming opposition from Orient Heights Neighborhood uh, Council people recommend opposition. Okay, we have seven raised hands. Can I just ask, once we start to unmute people, if you can briefly tell us if you're in support of opposition, that way we try to get to as many people. Um, so I'll start with Sean and then go to Diane. Um, state your name and address and briefly tell us if you're in support of opposition. Okay, uh, Sean Calista, 8 Montmorency Avenue, uh, right down the road from this development. Um, I strongly oppose it. Uh, the Neighborhood Association obviously voted drastically to um, not support this. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to keep single family homes in our neighborhood and I hope you guys can do so. I also just like to make a comment that I have a friend that owns uh, on 31 Monmouth where this developer uh, had a proposal, built a, built a building uh, and they're actively dealing with construction issues, you know, after buying the units. So I do worry about the craftsmanship of what the Crespos do uh, to their development. So please, Thank you. Thank start you. Okay, Sean Cronin, can you give us new information for you to tell us if you're in support of opposition? Sure, just to be clear, my name is uh, Sean Cronin. I'm at 108 Waldemar Ave, which is a direct of butter and immediate butter to this project. Mm -hmm. um, I would uh, like to speak out in opposition to this project and highlight um, that these my property and the property next door were built at the same time. They're nearly identical in terms of uh, their layout. And at the time they were built, there's, they're built into a hill. There's a retaining wall that is shared by both properties. Um, it's partially failed a couple, way before we bought the property. And my understanding is that part of this project is to tr destroy their half of the retaining wall, which would uh, undoubtedly compromise my retaining wall and potentially have that hill slide into our, the back of our property. Um, the community has been clear. We've been clear throughout this process that um, this project is too large. It wants to build too close and too high in a, a, a predominantly 1F neighborhood. Um, okay. And as such, the, uh, the board should. Uh, okay, Diane? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, good afternoon. I'll try to talk quick, but I'm Italian. Um, <laughs> I'm 124 Waldemar Ave, I'm three doors down from this uh, I'm in the butter. And um, to the left of me is the uh, Trinity. They just built 371 low-income low housing. 
directly across from Suffolk Downs. We had thousands of meetings with Suffolk Downs uh, with the 10,000 condos, and they agreed, this is very important, they agreed that they would put one family homes to stay in with this current zoning and to stay in the style of the neighborhood across the street from us. Okay. So, okay, so they, they honored our request, which is wonderful. But anyway, um, density, uh, green space, I mean, these are built right on the sidewalk. They're ginormous. I'm a taxpayer. I feel like it's all about greed, and uh, I'm sorry. I strongly oppose. I know you get a million other people to speak, but it's too big. Thank you. Oh. Nicoletta? Okay, go to Brooke. My name is Brooke Machado. I'm in the butter. I live at 103 Faywood Avenue. I am here to speak in opposition of this project. These buildings will occupy nearly the entire process of land on which they'll be built. They're gonna eradicate all of the open space which serves as a buffer between the dwellings in our 1F zone. They're excessive in height. They're way too close to the abutting uh, the direct abutters property lines. They do not fit the fabric of our neighborhood. Thank we you. want the board to oppose it um, to protect one F family. Thank, thank um, you. Okay, DI. Hi, DI, is it DI or D? You're unmuted. Hi, good, a good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Yep, go ahead. Can you briefly tell us, give us new information if you're in support or opposition? Um, I oppose it. Um, my name is Diane and Jemmy. I live at 91 Waldemar Ave, which is um, right across the street, a few doors up. I definitely oppose this project. It's too large. Um, there's not enough parking spaces. There's not enough air to breathe. It's just, if they put these three families, three, three families, it's overburdening the community. We're zoned for one family home, so I definitely, I hope the board will strongly oppose this project. Okay, Madam Chair, I have eight, well, seven raised hands. Do you want me to keep going? Well, our raised hands, and we have uh, probably eight more cases, so maybe you can do two more. Okay, I'll go to Mike and then. Uh, and Dave. ONS, if there's anyone you feel we need to call on, please let us know because we can't see them. Hi, my name is Michael Stutchins um, with an address of 244 Layden Street. I'm calling in favor of this project. I think it's appropriate in size and scale relative to the neighborhood, particularly with the Suffolk Downs project right across the street. Um, it'll deliver much needed housing, and nice to see that the developer is offering an affordable unit here. What is your address, Mr. Stephens? 244 Layden. Thank okay. you. Then, uh, oh, God, that was David, right? Um, Mike? Yeah, yes, hi. Uh, this is David Lank. Um, I own a, a small business with my brother in East Boston on Breedman Street. Uh, my wife and I will be living at 65 Gove Street, and the closest property that we do own is on Swift Terrace in the neighborhood uh, next door. Um, I am speaking in uh, support of the project. Um, I think that uh, across the street, while there are some single-story properties that uh, the developers have chosen at the Suffolk Downs development, also include stories that are uh, you know near 100, and that three stories is actually very modest considering where this, this property is situated. I think the developer offering an affordable unit uh, when they didn't have to is, is nice. I think that the uh, the difference in design between the three properties is fantastic. And I do want to speak in that the Crespos are um, born and raised in East Boston and have many high quality buildings um, that I am aware of. So while somebody may have had an experience that they didn't like, um, I think that they're stand up people and good builders. Thank you. How do you, are we all set? Do you want me to? I think there's still a couple of hands raised. Sorry, uh, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, know. Let's put some hands. I don't know if we can get to all of them, but uh, sure. I, I know there's a couple of abutters. I guess David Gratis and John Casamasima. Sorry, I found well, Let's make those the last hands. two because I know we have a good flavor and we also have a lot to go. Certainly. Okay, go ahead. Um, I unmuted David. Go ahead, David. Hello, David Gratis. 36 Layden Street in strong support of this project. We need housing. I love the volunteered affordable housing unit and the Crestos built good properties. I've seen a lot of them. Strong support. Thank you. John? Great. Uh, John Kasman, Sima 236 Orient Ave. I'm a member of the Orient Heights Neighborhood Council Board and also on uh, the advisory group for Plan East Boston. I wanted to oppose this project 
as it's currently zoned for a single family. And even under the most generous proposal uh, that is going through the process for Plan East Boston, this building would still not be allowed. It would only be allowed to be a two family. And it uh, also would re be required to have a larger setback. So I ask you to oppose the project. And I also point out that those that are speaking out in favor are not residents of the neighborhood. They are developers. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Yes, yeah, Madam Chair, I would like to ask the proponent if you can tell us what is the AMI for the affordable housing unit that you are proposing. So we, we had proposed 70%, uh, Mr. Valencia. Uh, that's where we were at, but we, we were open to suggestion. We didn't even uh, get that far. Um, it, if I may also, sorry, I hope that answered your question. I apologize. Yes, thank you. I was hoping to address, Madam Chair, if I may quickly, a couple other comments because they had to do with um, the building size and scope. Um, uh, quickly, please, yes. Okay. I just want to point out that we are over the rear required setback of 35 feet. We're at 39 feet, 6 inches. Our height is at 33 feet. So we're below even what would be allowed under the code. And I, I do know there are one families around there, but there are as many um, multi-families around there. To the very left of us is a three-unit building. Behind us is two, and diagonal is a multi-family residential rental building over 16 units. So we're not setting a precedent trend. We're trying to fit in with, with some of the newer three unit buildings that are popping up in this entire area and to create some housing. Thank you. And can you remind us, are these condos or rentals? Condos. Any other questions from the board? Madam Chair, did you read the BPDA recommendation? I did not. Is Mr. Hampton available to do so? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hampton. Uh, our recommendation was based on five unit with five spaces each. Uh, so once this is a new project, so I would be hesitant to offer any sort of recommendations in the board on this to try to understand the we do today. I really only understood part of that, which was that your recommendation was based on five five units per building. So I don't know if Hansi, you caught the rest of that. <laughs> I'm okay. getting my stuff's working today. Yeah, your internet's bad. If you can, if you can yeah. repeat after. So, we, so our recommendation was based on five, okay. five and five. But what, knowing what you know now. I can't admit that. We haven't seen anything. Right? Okay. We, we saw five and five, that's all. So they only get that first bite at the apple, I think is what he's saying. Yes. So he does not have an updated recommendation for us. No, ma'am. Okay, any other questions from the board? Okay, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, given the amount of opposition and letters that we received, okay. I'm putting a motion of denial without prejudice. Second. Mr. Sembridge. Yes. Mr. Shepherd. <laughs> I don't know if I heard a yes or no. Uh, Mr. Valencia. No. I was Better, You are yes, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Better Barraza. Yes. Ms. Wewell. No. Mr. Langham. No. The chair votes yes, but the motion does not carry. Right? Is that right? I think I counted correctly. Y yes, yes, it is. Um, the board can make another motion if they wish. If not, it would be a straight denial at this point. Okay. Madam Chair, I would like to put forward a motion. Based on the number of units that the proponent already reduced from 15 to, to nine and the addition of one affordable housing unit, I would like to make a, a motion to approve with BPDA the same, the same review. Is there a second? Yes. Okay, Mr. Stumberg. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Shepherd. No. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Bettaparaza. Given that the East Boston upzoning goes up to two units, raising it from single family to two units, I see these three proposals still being excessive at three units each, so I'm going to vote no. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. 
Sorry, Mr. Langham? No. Okay, the chair votes no, so this motion does not carry. Again, no, no other motion will be a straight denial uh, at this point. Okay, up to the board, do we have another motion? I make a motion to, to deny this project. I second. Is, okay, uh, Mr. Stembridge. No. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. No. Ms. Better Barraza. Yes. Ms. Wewell. No. Mr. Langham. No. I'm so confused by our vote right now. Um, <laughs> the chair votes yes, but I think the motion still does not carry. Is mm -hmm. that right, Javier? <laughs> It does not carry. That's okay, correct. well, then I think there's that's it. That's it. <laughs> At this point, it's a home board member, so it'll be denied. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We shall move on to that. We shall move on. To I think there was a question whether it was straight denial or whether it was denied without prejudice, Javier. Can you just clarify? I'll make a motion. Yeah, at this point, it would be denied with prejudice. If there's another motion, it would be denied without prejudice. But right now, it would be with prejudice. Okay, so I'll make a motion of denial without prejudice. I'll second. Oh, all right. I didn't realize we were still voting. Okay, uh, let's get back to Stembridge, Mr. Stembridge. Uh, yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Better Barraza. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Okay, the, vo the chair votes yes, the motion carries. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> okay, on to one o'clock. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Um, first of the one o'clock here in time frame, case VOA 1466938, the address being 123 Lifewood Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Yes, I am, Mr. Stammers. Okay, Mr. Small. Right ahead. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. So good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney Derek Small. I have a business address of 51 Dobson Road. Today we're here seeking relief to erect a two-family dwelling on a vacant lot. Uh, the zoning subdistrict here is a 3F5000. Our lot size is 3,250 square feet. Um, the violations, zoning violations are um, FAR. The requirement is 0 0.8. We are proposing 1.2. Usable open space, um, 400 per unit. We have, um, or 800 for, for the project, we have 506. Front yard insufficient, requirement is 15 feet. We are proposing 10. Rear yard insufficient, the requirement is 30 feet. We are proposing 12. Madam Chair, um, the unit sizes are 1,900 square feet and consist of three bedrooms and two and a half baths. Madam Chair, um, just a little bit about the property itself. This has been a vacant lot for well over 30 years and has been a blight in the community. And uh, again, it's a three-family zoning district, and we are seeking to put a two-family dwelling on the vacant lot. I'll stop there and entertain any questions that uh, board members may have. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Yeah, I have. I have uh, excuse me, I have one question. Yep. I'd yes, like sir. to know: is any is any of these units going to be for low-income people? They're not. They're going to be condominiums. They're home ownership opportunities, market rate. Because any, other question, any other questions from the board? 
Hearing none, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, the applicant met with the GMNC, the Greater Manhattan Neighborhood Council, uh, which sent a recommendation in the proponent go back to the Woodrow Ave Neighborhood Association and address traffic visibility issues as described in the refusal letter. Um, there is a dispute where the Applicant says that they met with the WANA twice and would like to proceed uh, and go before this board, whereas the WANA asserts that they only met once with the Civic Association. So it seems that there's uh, reconcilable differences uh, between the two parties. Um, that's the information that I have at this time. Thank you. Madam Chair, when it's done, I can respond to that. Let's uh, finish with the public comments yeah, first. No problem. Ayo, go ahead. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Ayamide Omuiwa from the Office of City Council of Brian Morell. And in regards to one to three Lyford Street, the applicant met with the uh, WANA. Um, again, it's contested whether it be one or so twice, and GMNC once for sure. Um, initially, WANA had asked for curb cuts for the parking space and the driveway on the side um, in order to preserve or, I, I guess, maximize the green space, in which GMNC also agreed with. Um, but to both um, organizations' records, no updated designs were submitted to their to them. And at this time, there are two letters of support on record. Um, I'm sorry, yes, two letters of support from um, Butters and one letter of opposition from GMNC Civic Association. With that being said, the council would like to defer for further community engagement and also with the recommendation of a BPDA design review. Thank you. Okay. No additional raised hands. Thank you. Mr. Small? Yes, Madam Chair. So we had four meetings with regard to this project. We had a, um, an abutters meeting sponsored by the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We met with the Greater Mattapan Neighborhood Council, and we met with the Woodrow Ave Neighborhood Association, which is one or twice. We were at their March meeting, and me and the owner attended the May meeting. So we met with Juana twice, just for the record. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review paying special attention to the exterior to work within the character of the neighborhood. May I have a second? Second. Cambridge. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Betterbraza. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. No. Did I miss your yes or no vote, Mr. Stembridge? My apologies. Uh, it was a yes vote. Thank you. Uh, the chair votes yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the board, have a good day. Next, we have case BOA 144-3969, the address being 404 West 2nd Street. It's the applicant and or their representative president. Yes, Mr. Stembridge, thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Baranci. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350. West uh, Broadway in South Boston. I represent Victoria Banos, the owner of Unit 3 of the 404 West 2nd Street condominium, which is a three unit condominium. Uh, my client uh, owns the top floor unit, and she's seeking approval today of a private roof deck, which would be pertinent to her unit only. The size of the deck, as can be seen on the plans, that's the site plan being viewed now, would be approximately 190 square feet. It would be accessed by means of a new spiral stairway, which would be added to my client's existing rear balcony. Uh, so there would be neither a headhouse nor a hatch providing access. It would come off an existing rear porch. Two violations are cited on the zoning refusal letter, roof structure restriction under section 6829 of the code and insufficient rear yard setback. 
Section 6829 makes access to a roof deck by means of a stairway headhouse uh, a zoning violation uh, requiring a conditional use permit, whereas access by means of a dimensionally compliant hatch would be zoning compliant. Uh, the intent, uh, I would suggest, is to discourage the construction of a rooftop headhouse to access the deck, uh, and that is not, as what, uh, not what is being proposed here. Access here, by contrast, would be by means of that spiral stairway leading from that existing uh, third floor porch level below, which is, I would argue, a means of access even less obtrusive than a roof deck. Second violation cited is for insufficient rear yard setback. In this district, the minimum rear setback is 20 feet. With the application of the shallow lot exception, the actual rear yard setback distance here is 15 feet. Um, as can be seen on the site plan, which was uh, shown earlier, the building's existing rear porch structure is located itself within the rear setback as a pre-existing condition, which means that simply the vertical rise of the proposed stairway, which provides access within the existing area of the rear porch, causes this sighted violation. The proposed roof deck itself is outside of the 15-foot rear setback area, except for a very small five-foot-wide connection to the proposed spiral stairway providing access. Uh, I would therefore posit that the violations here are very minimal. Uh, and again, this is a, a roof deck being proposed for the exclusive use of my client who owns the uh, third floor unit. With that, I'll pause and take any questions. Thank you. Just to confirm, she already has that rear deck. Is that correct? Uh, that, that's correct, Madam Chair. The uh, existing porch, again, is the best view. Uh, in terms of understanding the proposal. That existing porch is, of course, in fact, existing. Uh, instead of coming up through a roof hatch, which would have essentially made this a zoning compliant project, my client is proposing to come off of the existing rear spiral. The reason for this, the rationale, is that uh, directly beneath the proposed roof deck is uh, the bedroom. Uh, so having a drop down Air, uh, hatch stairway dropping down into a bedroom where there's a closet where there's obviously a bed and furniture uh, would be a bit impractical. Uh, my client's feeling was that since the spiral stairway would extend within the area of the existing rear porch and provide access to the roof deck, which I say is actually compliant in terms of uh, dimensional setback itself, uh, but uh, would be a better alternative than, than uh, using a hatch to provide access. Hatches can sometimes be unsafe, and this stairway, as I said, is actually a less intrusive means of accessing. What, um, are you aware of other existing roof decks in this immediate vicinity? Uh, there are numerous roof decks. This is um, not far from my office. This, uh, obviously, it's uh, you know, located on West Second Street in South Boston, uh, where there are a number of uh, similar roof decks. Are there questions from the board? Uh, do no. we have BPDA recommendation? Uh, we do not. Uh, I was told they did not receive any paperwork on this. Okay. And I guess the um, one of the questions for the architect is, did they explore going up the roof deck from within existing staircase that would lead all the way to the top. Uh, I can say that we did, in fact, look at that. Um, basically, the spiral staircase, even at a, a five foot tight diameter, ends up um, kind of eliminating one of the rooms of the top floor. And, and so since there already was a deck uh, existing in the rear of the uh, property and a staircase connected connects that deck all the way to the ground, it seemed appropriate to um, continue the existing exterior stair up rather than um, take out a room of, uh, of the interior or greatly like, uh, reduce the size of one of the rooms of the interior on the top floor. Yeah, I don't have any further questions. Other questions from the board? May I have public testimony? 
Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Anna White with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS hosted a voters meeting for 404 West 2nd, Unit 3 on April 26, 2023. Around a half dozen of voters attended the meeting. Three stated that they opposed the project, mainly due to fear of future noise, and one of other vocalized their support. Additionally, we have received 15 letters in support and five in opposition, including one from the St. Vincent's Neighborhood Association. The Neighborhood Association is opposed to the addition of any roof decks that are afterthoughts of absentee landlords or homeowners who wish to have outside space that does not conform to the neighborhood and its residents. At this time, though, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Madam Vice-Chair, members of the board, and I call it on from Council President Flink's office. <laughs> Councilor would like to go on reporting your position. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council of Large, Michael Flaherty, due to the uh, violations of Article 68, the Council to go back in opposition. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion to defer to allow BPDA to review the most updated plans and provide a recommendation to the board. Do I have a second? S second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Chair votes yes, the motion carries. Um, Madam Chair, this is Javier. The next deferral date would be July 25th. Does that work for the applicant? Mr. Marinci? That works. Yeah, that works. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next. Next, we have case BOA 144-5801, the address being 35 to 39 Saratoga Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, this is Mike Chavez, uh, architect representing the owner who's also here, um, Ms. Margot Kramer and Mr. Spencer Lord. Um, I, my address is 26 M Hill Park, personal address in Dorchester. Um, the project being proposed here is kind of a, a two-piece thing. Uh, one of them is an extended living area in the what's considered the basement level of this building, as well as a roof deck on the property uh, in there within the condo. Uh, if you go outside, just actually to the front cover sheet there again, um, the the building that you see there, they own that left-hand wing of that building, so that's uh, that's their unit there. So they have the exclusive air rights to the roof above or the, the, the roof the roof rights there um, and they also then have a, which is currently a storage area they use as a gym and etc on the uh, kind of basement level of the larger building that you see there on the right hand side um, there was a an initial uh, uh, mistake when it came to the uh, the single variance that we were asking for which is the FAR uh, when we submitted the drawings uh, we were under the impression that the uh, I was at least that the uh, storage area is actually not livable space but that it actually is considered livable space according to the assessor's office and that they're also paying taxes on it uh, so once we actually put that together the FAR is actually not being violated at this point and we are essentially here because of the roof deck uh, with the iPod uh, bulls there in East Boston um, so that was the reason we're here today. Um, so with that said, then the extended living area, the owners are uh, having their first child in, in less than a couple months. And so they are looking to uh, utilize their space, they're paying taxes on to convert it into a couple bedrooms, living area for family to come and visit and stay with them while they're, um, you know, starting the family and growing their family. Um, and so this space is being converted in the basement has 10 foot ceilings, the large windows have 40 inch sills. Uh, so it's not your typical basement level uh, that go all the way up to the, to the, to the top of the ceiling. The, the, there's an ex existing unit already in the basement uh, at that level uh, abutting them. And they also have a guest area, a guest room at the basement level uh, in their current unit. So the space really just behaves more like a garden level or first floor level space there. 
um, it is connected to their existing unit on that same level. So on the left hand side, you're seeing that that kind of small wing that you see there. This is unit two um, that is connected into the larger extended living area that they're proposing for this space. Um, and again, there that space that you see on the right hand side is what is already being paid for with. Um, as livable space um, and, uh, and, and listed in the um, assessor's office. Um, so that's that kind of one portion of it, and then we can talk about the roof deck, and I can then leave it open for any questions from there. Um, and the, the roof deck itself, they have an existing stair on the side of their uh, unit that already goes up to the roof. Uh, and so they're just going to be utilizing that existing stair, which I believe is the next slide down. Um, and yeah, so that's that's their existing current unit. You can keep going down. Um, and then there's their proposed roof deck up at the top there. Uh, so there's an existing stair already there, and they would just be converting that existing roof into a roof deck that would be privately used by the, the owner. Uh, there is an adjacent unit up at that level. They would allow that person to be able to utilize the deck if they needed to to access that stair to get down to the first level if they needed to. Um, so they'll leave that as available way for, for another means of egress if they needed that. Um, but the roof deck itself would be there for the, for the homeowners. Yeah, thank you. Any questions from the board? I, I, um, I guess if you can just clarify in the basement under unit two for the bedroom, are, are those egress windows? You, you said that the sill is right. They would be, yeah, okay, windows, so right. they can get out through the windows and then they can get out through the internal stair and also through the common hall, correct? That's correct. Okay, then no further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I call the testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Some back information on the community process. ONS hosted an abutters meeting for this proposal on April 13th of this year. Uh, one abutter attended the meeting and had some questions regarding the roof deck. The applicant presented to the Eagle Hill Civic Association and the Maverick Central Neighborhood Association on multiple occasions. Both associations supported the project and no concerns were expressed. With that information, we'd like to defer to the board. Thank you. Mr. Parr. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. Sebastian Parr from Carcer Colitis Office. Based on the community support, the council would like to call and support this project as well. Thank you. Okay, Saga. Yeah, my name is Saga Krantz, and I live on the 35 Saratoga Street, and we support this project. Thank you. I have no additional raise hands. Okay, with that, may I have a motion? I'll make, a motion, I'll make a motion to approve with um, BBDA design review and that no building code relief be granted. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Bedabraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. The motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. The next three cases are companion cases. The first being case BOA 1466 722 with the address of 14 Orient Avenue. Next is case BOA 146 also with the address of 40 Orient Avenue. And the, flat, and the third is case BOA 1466729, with the address being 36 Orient Avenue. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Yes, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Richard Lynn is 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner Gold Line Realty. Um, I believe we also have Ms. Waldo Lemus, who is the uh, uh, project architect. Uh, this is probably a good place to start, uh, Madam Chair, just to walk through uh, what this project involves, because I know we do have three separate docket numbers. Um, so beginning here, looking at our site plan, this is currently a 15,000 square foot lot located in a 2F 7,000 district. Um, it has a pre-existing two-family dwelling located to the right side of the lot. Our proposal would create a subdivision of a lot uh, and create one lot measuring, I believe we have a different uh, site plan. Uh, you could scroll down a bit. 
I know I, I, this is not the, I don't think this is a presentation I provided to the board, so I just want to make sure we're looking at the correct one. Yeah, this is, this is the one to start. Yeah, if we can just go back up to that first slide there. Um, no, next slide, I'm sorry. Here we go, perfect. So the, the, the lot to the left uh, would be a lot containing about 7,176 square feet and the remaining lot a little over 7,800 square feet. Um, those are both conforming in the 2F7,000 district as 7,000 square feet is the minimum amount required. Uh, we intended to create the proposed two family on the new lot uh, entirely by right, or as close to by right as possible for the 2F7000 district. Uh, each of the units would be a little over 1,100 square feet, roughly 1,150 square feet, uh, two bed, two bath. Uh, we are proposing a total of four parking spaces to the rear of the existing structure, and there'll be two additional parking spaces um, located behind the existing structure. Again, I had uploaded or sent to the board um, a set of, of the most current drawings uh, to walk through the, the additional plan. Yeah, but we can we can use this, uh, Madam Chair. There was just a slight adjustment in the actual subdivision, as you can see here. Yeah, seven one seven six and seven eight two four. I know that's labeled seventy five hundred. Um, so as you can see here, the landscaping that's being proposed behind the existing two family structure for two parking spaces and then the four spaces to the rear, they would all be accessed by a common easement. Uh, with respect to the relief, I'll start with the proposed structure. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this does comply with the 2F7000 um, zoning regulations for minimum lot size. Uh, we do uh, only require, I believe it's the uh, rear yard setback, uh, which is actually at 45 feet uh, to the building. Uh, we do have a set of stairs that look like they uh, encroach a bit into the rear yard setback, uh, but we are capable of moving the building uh, if we did that through design review to address that if that were a specific concern. Uh, other than that, it's only ancillary parking because everything else uh, dimensionally complies. The district allows for a 35-foot height limit three-story building, uh, which our building uh, contemplates. Uh, as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, the four parking spaces located to the rear would be ancillary and located on a separate lot uh, for the subdivision for the, exist for the proposed two-family. With respect to the existing two-family, which is located on the right side of the lot, uh, there is already a non-conforming condition on the right side at 4.7 feet for the side yard. Um, that condition doesn't change uh, because we're not making any changes to the existing structure. However, because we do subdivide a lot, that bump out portion of the building on the left side of the existing structure is within five feet of the proposed new property line. We're actually required to have a 10-foot setback. Uh, we feel that we can meet the spirit and intent of the code because that driveway uh, is about at least uh, 12 feet wide. Uh, we would have about a 17-foot setback between any proposed structure that could exist in the new lot, uh, which clearly meets with the requirements of Article 53. Uh, if we could zoom in, I think you can see the proposed um, rendering, which is up on the top portion of the screen. And I apologize, I'm not sure what happened to our uh, package that we had sent over, but the rendering uh, illustrates that you know we wouldn't be setting back the building uh, a good distance. There are some mature trees on the site that we would be able to preserve uh, and as we went through the community process, there were sort of mixed feelings on whether we keep the trees or incorporate new ones. We're open to either concept or idea. Uh, we do have a substantial amount of landscaping in and around the site that we are proposing behind the existing structure. Um, other than that, uh, with about 1,500 square feet minimum of open space on each lot, uh, 1,500 per unit, I should say, we're well above the open space requirements. Uh, lastly, I would point out that uh, we are fully cognizant and aware of the ongoing planning happening in the Orange Heights neighborhood, including preservation of one and two family zoning. We feel that this project uh, meets with the uh, anticipated intent of new zoning for that district. Uh, and it's, I believe, one of the reasons why uh, we were uh, fortunate enough to receive the support of the Orange Heights Neighborhood Council. Um, and I believe the BPDA has also recommended approval. Uh, I will pause at this moment, Madam Chair, if there's any specific questions of the members. Um, and I know we do have floor plans that should be available in one of these uh, three uh, agenda items, but in case there's any specific questions, I'm happy to answer those. Thank you, Mr. Lins. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, I'm gonna to go to public testimony. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time, the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. Uh, ONS hosted an abutters meeting for this project on January 5th of 2023. 
we had seven abutters join the call. Uh, abutters asked the developer to have uh, good landscaping um, to help do screening and buffering for uh, where the parking would be set up on the property. Um, one resident did comment that the height was excessive, but overall abutters were content to have a two family go on the site. Uh, the applicant then went on to present with the Orient Heights Neighborhood Council in February and April of this year. Uh, the council was pleased with the proposal of a two family home and they voted to support the project with 31 residents in favor and 10 in opposition. But with that information, we'll defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one question um, here. How many, how many parking spaces are we talking about? Um, uh, through the chair, uh, there are a total of uh, four parking spaces being proposed uh, ancillary to the site for the proposed new structure, so two per unit. And then there are two parking spaces for the uh, existing structure, uh, which is located on the uh, on the remaining lot. Uh, that is a currently a two-family. Sebastian. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Sebastian Power for Councilor Pilatan's office. Based on community support and from the support of Orient Heights Neighborhood Council, we would like to go in support of this project as well. Thank you. Thanks. I have no additional raised hands. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Make a motion to approve with BPDA design review. Second. May I have a second? Oh. Okay, Mr. Mr. Stumbridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Bedebraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair votes yes, motion carries. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Next, we have a 1, 1 p.m. interpretation, that being case VOA 1432589, with the address being 336R Bond Street. Is the applicant and or the representative present? Yes, Mr. Secretary, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney John Pulgini on behalf of the applicant, uh, Tony Ferrara, uh, who is on this call together with the engineer, Dick Morris. Um, <clears throat> this is zoning subdistrict and where we're located is single family 9,000. This lot size is 17,982 square feet. The proposal is to build one single family home all parties include this is isd as well as uh, you know the developer agree that our front yard setback is 149 feet and this is due to application er2 ert 110473 uh, the issue and dispute is inspectional services department cited the project for the following violation article 55 section 41 conformity with existing building alignment and that was in a refusal a few refusal letter dated 1-10-23. Uh, violation <clears throat> comments proposed building does not comply with the existing Pond Street modal alignment. For ease of reference I have, did you guys receive a, uh, I prepared a memorandum for the board, did, was that distributed to you? That was submitted through, um, okay, okay, good. Yes. Uh, I had attached a copy of the dimensional regulations applicable to this one family subdistrict in Jamaica Plain, Table E, Article 55. The issue in dispute is the manner of calculating the front yard depth. Note the table category itself in table E is labeled front yard minimum depth feet. And the table requirement is 25 feet. However, there's a footnote four, which directs a review to section 55, article 55, section 411, conformity with existing building alignment, which states, and this is the whole crux of this argument, if at any time in the same block is a lot required by this article to have a minimum front yard, there exists two or more buildings fronting on the same side of the street as such lot, instead of the minimum front yard depth specified in this article, the minimum front yard depth shall be in conformity with the existing building alignment of the block. There are, there's no dispute, there are two more buildings on Pond Street and the undisputed calculated modal of those buildings is 27 feet. So the zoning code is 25, but the modal comes up at 27. Therefore, according to the clear and unambiguous language of this section, 
the minimum front yard depth is 27 feet in conformity with the existing building alignment as opposed to the 25 feet listed in the table. The modal can be a number higher or lower than the table requirement depending upon the built environment. In either scenario, it merely becomes the new minimum front yard depth. <clears throat> Throughout the zoning code, there are maximum and minimum dimensional requirements. We have maximum building height, maximum floor area ratio, minimum side yard, minimum rear yard, and minimum front yard to name a few. ISD's interpretation essentially penalizes an applicant for providing more than the minimum front yard. The applicant's proposed lot size is almost twi twice the minimum requirement, and yet ISD is not citing for excessive lot size. This is because ISD recognizes the word minimum in that section of the code, but for some reason does not here. There is simply no support for an arbitrary application of the rules. In every section of the code, it holds true that unless stated otherwise, you can exceed the minimum, but you cannot exceed the maximum. This applies to the modal as well, which simply sets the new minimum in the front yard depth. Because it's such an obvious thing, there's really no case law uh, that really is on point. I did provide a, uh, a case that you'll see, uh, Canisaro Durenzo, a mass land club case in which the judge upheld the Mashpee Zoning Board of Appeals case. In his opinion, as setback, as setback requirements had come into question in relation to the standing of the plaintiff, the judge stated the proposed new home side yard setbacks complied with the Mashpee zoning bylaws because the proposed setback distance of the new house is greater than 15 feet as required under the bylaw. So that's really the argument. I don't know if somebody is here to speak on behalf of um, ISD. This was initially um, denied. ZB, uh, ISD um, deputy of um, planning and zoning, who's a zoning attorney, reviewed it. He removed the violation. That um, attorney left ISD. And when he left, this violation was put back on, on, the, uh, on this project. So this has been going on for, I think, almost two years and eight months that we've been going through this. So I'm here to answer any questions or to get your thoughts on what you feel with respect to 55411, which is what the crux of the argument that we're here for today. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions from the board? Do we have someone from ISD? Yeah. Bryson? I'm not sure if we have anyone that can speak to that process. Javier, are you aware or going to speak to this? As to the plans examiner, I believe he's on vacation right now. We did notify ISD, but it doesn't seem like anyone's here right now to represent. Okay. Good question, Ms. Benabraza. Okay, so um, just, just for clarity, um, this is about interpretation, um, regardless, um, whichever way it is interpreted, it's just a matter of whether you would get a variance on that. Is that correct? That is correct. It, whether there would so be it's, not, it's, not, it's not prohibiting you from building your proposal. It's just whether it's recorded or not on the decision letter as a so variance that's, that's needed. So yeah, so it's establishing that we would not need a variance. This is an as of right project, which was what ISD stated initially, uh, and, right. and then went and, back. And the process is taking almost longer to resolve the interpretation. Well, it, it, very good point. So we, we went back and forth with the plans review, I did, for you know eight months, and we had narrowed it down to one this one violation. Okay. At that point, I sent an email to the plans examiner and his supervisor. And he got involved, and this was during COVID, so that took several months for that to happen. Then that came back and everything was good and we were preparing our construction uh, drawings to file at ISD. And it wasn't until that plan, the uh, supervisor had left ISD that all of a sudden this came back on. So that's why we're here before so, the um, So uh, we, we just listen to like the cases and we mm -hmm. make a re recommendation individually. And so um, Javier, um, if we were to get an opinion from the city laws department, what, what is the turnaround to hear the opinion before we can then make a motion? 
Uh, so if you, the board makes a motion to refer to the city of law, uh, city of law department, depending if they would give it back within the next week, it could be scheduled the second hearing for a vote uh, to the next available hearing. Okay. okay, and we would have that in front of us. So I, I, if if that's the case, I would like to. Uh, can we make motions yet, Madam Chair? I'm sorry, I didn't want to jump in front of you. Uh, I, Javier, is that okay? Can we, if there's no other questions, but I believe. Correct. Maybe, maybe okay. Maybe Are there any other questions from the board? I'd like to ask one question. I think I understand this, but just to clarify. So where the minimum required is 27 feet due to the existing modal building provision, but you're saying your front yard depth is 149 feet because of the access from the right of way? That's correct. So there's no dispute, that, there's no dispute from ISD that we are 149 feet off of the front yard. So the only violation is the front yard setback and everybody agrees that we're 149 feet back and that the modal is 27 feet. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ms. Bedebraza, do you want to make a motion? I, I, I'd like to make a motion um, to refer the matter to the city's law department for an advisory opinion on the zone and code if ISD interpretation of the violations are correct. Do you want I want a second. second. Okay. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Petabraza. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. The chair votes yes. The motion carries. So Javier, is there, can we get a date so at least the applicant knows that we're going to review this right away once we get that advice? Right now, I can't say because we have to notify the law department and depending on when they give us back their advisory opinion would be that. So I can't specify a date right now when it would be available. I have in the past, uh, Ms. Benaparazza, I have um, participated in um, like appeals like this that have gone on to the law department. And it usually runs about six to eight weeks to get a decision from them. Okay, well, that's better than two years. So thank you. <laughs> two, two, two years and eight months, right? Okay. Well, that's another six weeks. <laughs> well, we'll see you in six to eight weeks yeah. then, Mr. Bishop. <laughs> all right, enjoy your night, Jay. I know it was a long one. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank you, folks.